the latest season of the wildly popular con theme podcast, Chameleon, is back. This new season, called Wild Boys, covered the 2003 international news story where two half-starved young boys, known as the Bush Boys, turned up in a small Canadian town and tell an incredible story where they claim to be raised in the British Columbia wilderness, and this was their first ever contact with society. They'd never seen a TV, gone to school, or registered for IDs. There was just one problem. Not a word the boys said was true. Nearly 20 years later, award-winning comedian and journalist Sam Mullins uncovers the bizarre true story of the strangers who turned his hometown upside down. It's a psychological drama you can't miss with never-before-heard interviews and audio from the boys and their family. Check out this preview. The boys couldn't have known it, but they showed up in the right place at the right time. Because in a sense, this only could have happened in Vernon because it's like we didn't even have the infrastructure in place for an interesting thing to happen. You need to know about my hometown. Vernon is located in the Okanagan, a region in the interior of British Columbia, sort of halfway between Vancouver and Calgary. Historically, it's been a middle-class place, but the whole region has sort of been transformed into an outdoor playground for the wealthy. The Okanagan is known for its wineries, golf courses, mountain ski resorts, its lakes, and the mythological beast, the Ogopogo, who lives in one of said lakes, allegedly. The crown jewel of Vernon, and in my opinion, the whole Okanagan, is Kalamalka Lake. So Cal Lake is home to Cal Beach, and it's the beach in a town filled with beaches. And right across the street from the beach is the hallowed Cal General Store. Think sort of a folksier version of a 7-Eleven. If I could distill the vibe of Cal Store down into a single transaction, it would be a teenager in a bathing suit buying a slushy and then paying with a wet $5 bill. And then when the cashier's back is turned, they steal a lighter. That kind of place. And in the summer of 2003, strange things were afoot at Cal's store. Vernon is a white town. It's a conservative town. It's a hockey town. There's lots of churches. There's lots of retired folks. There's a winter carnival parade every year. And the city has never once held a gay pride parade. More so than other places, there's this underlying assumption that everyone more or less feels the same way that you do. Culturally, politically, it just feels really homogenous. Which is why when these two boys showed up in town, people would double take. They're kind of odd. These two wild children appear in our community. They're always together. You never, they're right. never apart. They're always together. Yeah, extremely thin. Very skinny, look like an alien. You know, you can see his, his collarbone. I mean, I didn't even know how he walked. Had rags on their back. And they don't have a home. They had no place to live. And then I remember thinking, that was really odd. But it wasn't just what they were wearing or what they were doing necessarily. It was more like an energy or an aura thing. You could look at these two in any context and be like, wait, what? They were a wrinkle in the fabric, a glitch in the matrix. No one knew what to make of them. Like when the boys would come by Cal store every day. A woman who worked there at the time told me that the boys would use the payphone sometimes, but she wasn't sure if they were using it or just playing with it. You know, like, <laughs> that was my impression. This is Lynn, who managed the produce stand at the store in 2003. And while the rest of Vernon's teens were buying or stealing five-cent candies or slushies, these boys were only ever interested in buying one thing at the store. Fruit. Only ever fruit. And another thing was, their relationship wasn't obvious at a glance. The older boy seemed like he held some kind of power over the younger one, which raised all these other questions like, 
Did he kidnap the younger one? Was he forcing him not to eat? Is that why the younger one is so skinny? Are they lovers? Criminals on the run? Yeah, I had no idea what was going on with those two. (laughs) (laughs) In general, the boys were keeping an extremely low profile for months. The summer was receding and the nights were getting colder. And this story might have ended here. The boys would have just disappeared or moved on to some other town, if not for Tammy McDougall Ryder. Hello. Oh, geez, sorry, Elliot. Hello. Sorry, I just stepped on my dog. (laughs) I genuinely can't imagine how this would have unfolded if Tammy didn't get involved. And getting involved is kind of Tammy's whole thing. I'm just the type of person that isn't going to sit back and, oh, someone else will take care of it. And, you know, I just, I am that person that will take care of it. In 2003, Tammy was in her early 30s, and she just moved to Vernon with her husband and three children. I was a full-time mom. I was just raising three kids, just running up and down Silver Star Mountain for hockey (laughs) in early mornings and late evenings. And my husband... uh, I think at the time was probably working out of town a lot. One day, Tammy was walking through downtown Vernon with her kids when she saw the boys for the first time. I had my kids in the car, and I remember driving by the library. And um, I just remember it was kind of slow motion. I remember seeing them going, you just couldn't help but naturally stare like, holy smokes, what's up with these guys? Because they looked so different and a little... um, The one just looked so, he was just so emaciated and it was so scary. It was so scary. And and just what they were wearing, it just seemed sort of, I don't want to say cult-like, but it just seemed weird. It just wasn't normal. But unlike everyone else in town, Tammy isn't a person to just mentally note it or forget about it. Where other people sit back, Tammy activates. I kind of made it a mission to see if I can find them to help them. For the full episode, search Chameleon Wild Boys.